Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So today I am showing you guys it's time, it's a new season, and I'm stupid and realized I never filmed this in March. I thought I did. Like I had my whole chart written out so I had all the shades in front of me and realized that I never filmed it. So today we are doing my Spring Z palette. If you guys are new to my channel, because I've had a lot of recent subscribers since the last one of these went up, um, every season, I switch out the colors in this Tarte palette. This is just a magnetic palette. It holds about 25 shadows, give or take. Um, and I switch out the colors that are in here for each season to give me a chance to use more of my single eyeshadows that I have because I have like 12 Z palettes of single eyeshadows, drugstore high end, all that jazz. Um, so this is what my spring one is looking like right now. I've got a lot of metallic eyeshadows in here, a lot of pastels, some dark ones to make some smokier springtime looks. So yeah, I am super excited. So let's get into this. Um, let's start with the top row. As I go, I'm also going to have the swatches up here in the corner on my arm for each row, just as an FYI. So let's begin. The first one we have here is this shade right here by ColourPop, and it's called Tiki. And it's actually the yellow shade I have buffed into my crease today. All my eyeshadows today, all but one eyeshadow on my eyes today, are in this C palette here. So you can kind of see what some of them look like in action. Um... But I love this. I think when it comes to spring and you're doing colorful eye looks, yellows and golds and oranges tend to be really great to put in the crease to kind of not liven up, but add more dimension to a colorful eye look. I love using yellows. I actually have two different yellows in here. So I have that one, which is more of like a light mustardy yellow. And then I have Lemon Drop by Makeup Geek, which is the next one over, which is kind of a satin finish. It's a little more of a true yellow and it's a little bit more electric and neon. So it's gonna pair well with like this down here, the blues down here, where this tends to ground better with the pinks and oranges like what's on my eye today. Uh, the next one here in the middle is the Makeup Geek Foiled Eyeshadow in Nostalgic. It's this really pretty pinky color. It's almost got a lavender hint to it. They do have a lavender one, which I think is called Hysterical, I want to say, but I'm not 100% sure on that. Don't quote me. Um, but I want to say that was more pink because I am trying, I am trying, guys, to branch out and wear more pink eyeshadows and reds because I don't, I'm very picky with pink and red eyeshadow. I do have a huge neon, you know, I neon pink eye tutorial. I will link that up there. Um, but that's, you know, it's not quite the same thing because um, it's not a very wearable eye look. So yeah, I wanted something that was a more wearable pink so I can kind of ease myself back into wearing pinks more often. So this guy can pair well with both the purple shades in here as well as the pink because it's got a shift of both in there. The next shade in here is by ColourPop, and that is the shade Chic Happens. And it's just a really nice, it looks a lot darker on camera than it actually is in person. It's kind of this gray mauve kind of color with, a, you know, that purple undertone to it. So again, going to work really well for some cooler eye tone looks to put in my crease. Or again, all over the lid for a much softer eye look. The last shade in that row is by Anastasia Beverly Hills. It is the shade Macaroons. Macaron, depending on how you want to pronounce it. And this is one of their metallic eyeshadows. This was launched, I believe, last spring as one of the new eyeshadows from Anastasia. So is another one that's down here as well. Um, but I do love the Anastasia eyeshadows and I like the formula on them. They're just so beautiful. And oh, what am I doing? It's swatched. I'm trying not to swatch it because I had the swatches up already. Um, but again, I want to say that was foiled, but a little bit more going not less wearable, it's not the right word, more intense of a purple, so that'll lead up to the purple down here. But yeah, the next shade I have starting the second row is ColourPop's Rosé All Day, and I really love this shade for two different reasons. It is a metallic. Um, the ColourPop press shadows I'm very impressed with in general. The ones on my eyes today are all ColourPop ones. Um, but this is kind of that antique gold color, so it's got a gold base to it, but it's got that green shift to it, which means it'll pair really nicely with the yellows in the top row or going towards the blues and the greens further down in the palette, which is why I picked it, because I want to say that wasn't necessarily yellow, but that could work well with blue, because obviously how do you get green, blue, and yellow. Next one in this row is Cannonball by ColourPop. It is the one that is buffed into my crease. I don't know how well you guys can see my eyeshadow really, but... 
Um, I've got kind of a sunset look going today. Um, but I love this. I love getting to use warmer shades, especially come summertime, you know, once I get to the end of May, you know, Memorial Day weekend time. This will definitely be a popular shade. However, when I don't want to go quite as intense, I do have the shade next to it, which is the shade Early Bird by Makeup Geek. I believe this was in my Fallsy palette. Maybe. I'm not 100% sure on that. But I really love this as a very warm, neutral brown shade. Warm neutral doesn't make sense, does it? A warmer neutral brown shade because obviously when we get over here, we get a little bit more straight up neutral. Um, but I want to say that had a bit of an orange to it, but wasn't fully orange like Cannonball. So that's why I picked Early Bird. The next shade is Peach Smoothie by Makeup Geek. Now I have to say something. Peach Smoothie was never... You know, when they released, when Makeup Geek released their eyeshadows, everybody was all peach smoothie, peach smoothie, peach smoothie. And I was like, peach smoothie doesn't work as a transition shade on me because I'm too light. It's too orangey toned. So I usually use beaches and cream. But again, I want something that could be a transition shade in here that'll go well with these colors because it kind of can, on my lids, it doesn't look it in the pan, but on my lids, it can pull a little bit warmer, which is why I put it in here. So I had something that was warmer but a potential transition shade if I used a lighter hand with it. The last one in the row over here is by ColourPop and that is the shade Bel Air. It's just a perfect neutral brown um, on the lighter side, like a neutral tan brown. It's a newer one in my collection. I just got this in like January or something like that. But like I said, I just wanted a neutral brown to throw in here to kind of balance everything out. Starting the third row, we have Limelight by Makeup Geek, which is also a foiled shadow. I love the Makeup Geek foiled shadows. I think they are a great way to spice up any colorful eye look as a halo, as an all over the lid whatever it may be, inner corner, something, lower lash line. There's so many ways to incorporate the foiled eyeshadows into any eye look, whether or not it's meant to be a colorful eye tutorial. And I love the limelight shade. I think it's fantastic. I think it's great. I think I used this in my Mardi Gras makeup tutorial, which I will link up here for you guys because that was one of my favorite tutorials I've put up so far this year, actually. Um, and next to it is another Makeup Geek foiled eyeshadow in the shade Pegasus, which is more of that aqua teal kind of color it does have a little it almost matches this color here it looks like it on camera but this is actually much darker but i just really wanted to play with pegasus because it took me forever to get my hands on it and then when i did i felt i wasn't as inspired anymore to try and use it you know so i figured you know what i'm gonna put it in here and i'm gonna get some use out of him the next shade in the middle of the entire palette is poodle by ColourPop. it is just a nice matte pink it's very mid-tone it's not too bubblegummy but it's not too magenta either so like i said trying to experiment more with the pinks that's why there's some pinks in here the next shade in the row is making moves by ColourPop. it's this dude right here that's almost reddish this is actually what is on my lid. I ended up topping it off with a ColourPop Super Shock shadow, but it's the one all over my lid here, and it's actually mixed with this shade down here. But this is just a really nice red, almost with a hint of salmon in there because it's almost got a peachy undertone to it, but it's not peach. It obviously looks red in the pan. The last one in that row is also by ColourPop, and it's the shade Conundrum. It's just a really nice, neutral, darker, darker than Bel Air, but it's still not quite as dark as these ones along the bottom here. So it just makes a really nice mid-tone darker brown for me to be able to use. Going into the fourth row, we are going to start off with ColourPop Muscle Beach, which like I said, does look a little bit like this guy up here, but it is a matte shade. It's just a nice matte blue. I would say this is definitely more on the aqua side. Um, again, going into spring and summer, I like using blues. I don't quite know why. Um, I have quite a few blue eyeshadow tutorials on my channel and actually I think there will be one up already or one coming soon. If it's already up, I'll link it, but you know, it, it, I like my blues. <laughs> which is also why I have the shade next to it, which doesn't look super blue on camera, but it is definitely a blue-green silver shift. This is Venice by Anastasia Beverly Hills. This was also released in the spring along with Macaroon. This guy is just amazing. I wanted something that was a little bit lighter than Pegasus, so if I wanted to do like an entire metallic halo eye, I kind of want to. Ooh, who wants to see that? A metallic blue halo eye with these um, but I thought something like that in the center of it as a spotlight or something would be beautiful to try and do. The next shade in here is another Makeup Geek foil eyeshadow. This is the shade Masquerade. It is just this really pretty, vibrant... Why is it not registering that way on camera? 
it is a very pretty a very vibrant purple shade and i do like it a lot um obviously the shades up here will be reflecting this a little bit better than they look on camera um, the next one in here is also by Makeup Geek. It is just one of the regular matte shadows. It's kind of got a purpley brown undertone to it. And this is the shade Vintage. Vintage I've had for ages and I usually use it to just smoke along my lash line or just add a little bit in the outer corner to deepen it. And that's kind of why I threw it in here. It has a purpley vibe. So if I don't want to go with the super dark shade in the bottom corner, I can stick with this guy and still make it nice and dark. The next one in the row is Bedrock by Makeup Geek. This was in my winter palette, I believe, but I never used it in the winter palette because I ended up not going with any cool tone gray shadows like that. So I decided to pop it back into this palette to use with some of the cooler toned eyeshadows in here. And now we are on to the final row. What, what? First one in here is by ColourPop. This is the shade Piece of Cake. It's just a nice, vibrant, bright blue. Loads of fun, easy to use. Blue eyeshadow, man. I'm feeling the blue eyeshadow lately. The next one here is Makeup Geek Time Travel. It looks very, very green on camera. It's actually a very dark teal. Um, it's, it's definitely, next to all the blues, it looks green, but when you put it next to the greens, it looks blue. That's what drives me nuts about teals. Um, but it's just a nice dark matte shade to help ground all these blue eyeshadows and green eyeshadows that I have in here. The next one in the middle of the bottom row is the other one that I mixed with this guy up here to get the center of my lid, and that is the shade Going Steady by ColourPop. It is just a really nice dark matte raspberry. Perfect, amazing. This would also be a good one for fall as well, but I wanted to try and incorporate some raspberry into the spring as well. The next one here is by Anastasia Beverly Hills, and this is the shade Hot Chocolate. Um, this was in one of the palettes that Anastasia released ages ago. Before Modern Renaissance, what was it called? Uh, self-made palette, and it was my favorite shade in the self-made palette. Um, it was really the only shade I was using in the self-made palette, so I decided that I was going to get rid of that palette and end up buying this in the individual because it was finally available. So I bought it. It's a really nice dark, dark matte brown. It's way darker than this guy up here, so this is my super dark neutral brown. It's not too warm, and it's not too cool. And the final shade in here is by ColourPop. It is the shade Razzy, Razzy. I'm not sure how to say that. It's a really dark purpley brown color with kind of a hint of a red undertone to it. Um, but again, I just wanted to say that was the absolute darkest in here without it being a black. I don't really tend to use black eyeshadows a lot. So I like to use colors that are extremely dark that they might as well look black. Like this guy looks extremely black on camera, but he's purple. Um, so yeah. That is everything in the Spring Z palette down below. If you guys have any eyeshadows you're dying to see me use out of this palette, tell me down below. If you're interested in that blue halo I mentioned, tell me down below. An all matte look, um, whatever it may be. I love, love doing these. And I've had so many people who are like, this is such a cool idea. I'm going to incorporate it. So I really like doing these. Plus, it kind of gives me a, a running series on my channel, I guess you could say. Um, this is my third one now. So first year will be in you know, June when I put up one for the summer and then there'll be another one in September. So it's it's kind of cool to have something that I feel like I create. Cause I feel like I haven't seen anyone do anything like this. So I don't know if I'm the first person to. If there's someone else, tell me down below. I'd love to see what they do for theirs. But yeah, it's just kind of fun to have something unique to me that I get to do. That is it. And also I had someone question on the last one of these or the first one of these, why do you use this palette? Um, I use it because it comes with a giant mirror. <laughs> That's why he goes in here. Plus, it can hold more than these smaller Z palettes, but it's not so big. And it's very sturdy. Like, you can travel with this. He doesn't get, you know, beat up or dented because he's got a very nice hard cover. Um, Tarte has released quite a few different versions of this. This is just the size that they had originally. I think this guy retails for $16 or $17, $20, somewhere in that range. So, yeah, that is everything. Like I said, if you guys enjoyed this video, please thumbs up. I love some thumbs ups. Also, be sure to hit the subscribe button down below. And if you don't want to miss any of my future videos, you should hit the notification bell because apparently that's the only way you know if I'm uploading videos. I don't know what's up with YouTube and that, but that's a different issue. Be sure to leave me your questions, comments, concerns, suggestions for this video and future videos you want to see. Um, I've kind of been writing down ones that I've been seeing in the comments. So I'm going to try and crank them out. I'm currently in the middle of pre-filming because I am moving the first week of May, so I won't be able to film at all that week. So I'm trying to get everything in order for the first through the first two weeks of May. So I have time to put my apartment together, maybe film an apartment tour. I'm not sure if you want to see that down below. I'm not quite sure. I'm kind of all over the place right 
right now, but I'm trying to pre-film these videos and get them ready. I know I recently had a hiatus um, where I had trouble, I was having trouble uploading and then I was sick, like sick like in my bed for a whole weekend, which is when I usually film. I was like unable to get out of my bed, it was bad. Um, so yeah, story of my life. Um, thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.